Okay, this uh, video is just about the layers of the gut wall. So you need to know the sort of order in which the uh, gut is formed of these different layers. So remember, it's a hollow tube, so you know, a tube kind of does that. So you could cut it across. That would be a transverse section. But equally, you could cut it up and down, and that would be a longitudinal section. And I will try and remember to do a little bit about how you tell the difference between a transverse and a longitudinal section. So, <clears throat> um, the gut wall is pretty sort of circular in outline, being a tube. And it has a layer of uh, pretty much connective tissue called the serosa around the outside that's just sort of you know that just kind of keeps everything together as it were just underneath the serosa we've got a layer of longitudinal muscle so Longitudinal muscle, just to go over here, goes up and the fibres are arranged up and down the gut. So this is all smooth muscle, so those fibres are pretty much looking like that. If you cut the gut across then, what you're going to see is the ends of the cells. So they're going to look like little dots. So that's why you're seeing them probably on diagrams uh, when you go on Google Images as little dots because this is a transverse section and therefore the longitudinal muscle are going to look like little dots. We've then got a layer of circular muscle and the circular muscle of course the fibres are arranged around so these are the ones that are sort of going around got like that. So you'll see then in a, a transverse section you'll see the sort of, you know, it looks like that. Fibres are sort of lined up when you look down the microscope. Inside of those two layers of muscle, so what have we got? We've got circular muscle. and we've got a longitudinal muscle. Now those serve to uh, perform peristalsis, they're antagonistic muscles, so if the circular one's contracting, the longitudinal one's relaxing and vice versa. Um, so together they're producing the movements that are moving everything down, which is called peristalsis. their job. Just inside of that we've got a layer called the submucosa. And the submucosa has uh, some glands and I know this is where the confusion is going to start in some places. So, for example, in the duodenum, this is where Brunner's glands are located, but they're not found anywhere else in the gut apart from in the duodenum. And we also got blood vessels, and we've got lymph vessels in there. So that's the sort of submucosa so-called because it's under sub the mucosa which is kind of the business end of the whole gut. So then we've got the mucosa and this is the bit that has the uh, adaptations
for example, gastric pits, villi, or it can be just sort of, you know, fairly flat, like the, the colon looks fairly flat. Um, and the whole mucosa is lined with epithelial cells. And they include goblet cells. So just um, let me just draw you a quick goblet cell. So goblet cells are so called because they look like goblets. That's an old-fashioned wine glass. Posh word for a wine glass. So these are just epithelial cells. So if we chopped one across through, so it's lying on a basement membrane, you can see that here it's got this sort of hollow middle which is called the goblet, which is why they're called goblet cells. You can tell these are named by biologists, these. So what do goblet cells do? Well, they secrete mucus into the goblet. So again, just to refer you back to uh, the synoptic stuff, they're making the protein aspect of mucus out, uh, on their endoplasmic reticulum. It's getting modified into mucus, so it's having carbohydrate added to it, so it's a glycoprotein um, in the Golgi body. It's forming vesicles. They're all sort of fusing and exocytosing at the surface. And this goblet is going to fill up with mucus and it's going to then spill out over the adjacent cells um, and protect them from being digested by themselves. So we've got epithelial, epithelial cells uh, which have varying functions as we'll see through the gut but we've also got goblet cells really important and they're all the way through the gut so every bit of epithelial tissue that you would see from the gut um, has these goblet cells that secrete mucus. So that's kind of the layers of the gut but of course you're not going to see uh, maybe a circular diagram. You're far more likely to see a picture of a, a villus or the duodenum and have to identify them from there. So um, let me just get rid of this. Will I? No, I won't. Let's just look at what is uh, longitudinal. So we've done a T-section. If you were looking at a longitudinal section of the gut, so you've cut it down and you're kind of looking across, you're going to get the serosa still, but now your longitudinal muscle is going to look like that, those long fibres, because the cells, those smooth muscle cells that are all lovely leaf shape, are all and that they're going to look like little little stripes like that. Your circular muscle then, which again is smooth muscle cells, has now, it's in a longitudinal section, has been cut across, and that will look like dots. Uh, sometimes you'll sort of see them almost arranged in, a, in areas. So they'll look like dots, your circular muscle. Then you'll have submucosa, with all its vessels in it, and then your mucosa, which, again, you know, often you'll see the ileum or the duodenum where it's thrown up into folds with your layer of epithelial cells over the top, and these sort of, you know, vessels heading off down and coming in from... Um, the, the submucosa. Sorry, I've gone a bit deep there. I've now gone into the muscle layer, so they, so, you know, they're they're coming out of this region here. Um, <clears throat> and you get submucosal glands. So in the duodenum, you'll have a you know a Brunner's gland there, and you have mucosal glands as well. So they'd be like that. Um, and they're, they're things 
to look out for. And of course, you know, if you're looking at a transfer section, you're probably looking at a little sectiony section. So Rosa, you'd be then looking at your longitudinal muscle. So this would be a longitudinal section, transfer section. Longitudinal in transverse is going to look like little dots. The circular muscle is going to look like little lines. You've then got your submucosa with its blood vessels in it, and then you'd have your, you know, villi. In the mucosa. And you kind of just need to know those layers of the gut. That's kind of the bottom line. And of course the bit in the middle, let's not forget that, that's called the lumen, because it's the hole down the middle. So here would be the lumen, and here would be the lumen. And this is the outside serosa. And I think that kind of wraps it up for layers of the gut wall. Can't think of anything else that I need to say about that. Um, yeah, where to go? Go away, learn it. <laughs>